Christmas is about God revealing himself to us. God coming to our planet. Look at verse 14 in our scripture passage this morning. So the word, Jesus, became human and made his home among us. Now God wanted to make sure that we didn't miss this great and important message. And so he, he sent John the Baptist. John came and, and made it clear to people that he was not the Messiah, he was not the Son of God, but the Messiah, the Son of God, was coming. He was just a prophet. He was a, a herald speaking the truth about the Messiah and what and who would the Messiah be? John makes it clear that, well, he was the Son of God, the one and only Son of God, that he came into our world to be the light of eternity, of eternal life. He came, and John makes this very clear, to, to bring spiritual rebirth to people. It would no longer be about the law, but it would be about this, this personal reality and relationship with God. John makes it clear that the coming of Jesus Christ changes the way that we would relate to God, that it would no longer be through the, the sacrificial system. It would not be about our sacrifice, but it would be about God's sacrifice for us in Jesus Christ, a baby in a manger. The truth is, Jesus Christ coming to our planet changes everything. It changes everything. It changes the way that, that we see God and the way that we relate to Him. I love to ask people what they think about, what, what comes to their mind when they think about God. And that response, oh, it runs the gamut from a God who's out to get them to a God who really doesn't care. Every once in a while I'll get a response about, well, you know, God does love me. I've never had a person say what comes to my mind is a little baby wrapped in strips of cloth in a manger. That's not what comes to mind when we think of God. Jesus coming to this planet was a communication to us about the fact that God was love, the second half of verse 14 in John chapter 1, he was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And yes, the, the Bible contains descriptive passages that detail the reality that God wants to be in a love relationship with us, that, that he loves us. And he has a plan for our life. None more descriptive and specific than John 3.16. God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Our scripture passage this morning as well as John 3.16 points to the fact that a new way of relating to God has been ushered in to the world. It highlights on the one hand that there's very much a human dilemma that, that we all experience. And that human dilemma is, is that we yearn to be in relationship with God 
but we can't really have the relationship with God that we desire to have. That somehow we can't bridge the gap between us and God. And it's not as though we haven't tried. But a right relationship with God is not about doing things right or doing the right things. We often think that. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's a good thing to do the right thing and to do things right, but that's not enough to enable us to encompass and experience the love of God. In fact, Many people think that it's all about being good. Oh, my relationship with God is about me being good or learning to do these good, right things. And there are whole traditions in Christianity that are design uh, ceremony and practices meant to help us experience the love of God, yet at times can be very empty in the ritual and their ceremony. No, it's not about doing what is right or doing right things. We are children of God, but have you noticed we don't always act like children of God? I think everybody at least has their moments. I know I do. I know I'm a child of God, but I don't act like a child of God. And even that creates a, a dissonance in my own heart and soul. I, I know I was created to be in this relationship with God, but why does God feel distant from me? Why, why do I not act like the privileged child of God that I know I am? I know that God has a, a standard and I fall very short of that standard that I'm a sinner. Our problem is described in, our, our dilemma is described in Romans 3.23. For everyone has sinned and we all fall short of God's glorious standard. Wow. We know God's holy. We know He has a high standard. In fact, His standard is so high, that's a little discouraging to us, isn't it? No. Oh, I know. I have to fix this dilemma. I have to solve this dilemma on my own. And isn't it interesting what Proverbs says? There is a path before each person that seems right. But in the end... It ends in death. We all want to bridge the chasm that exists between us and God. And it's not as though we haven't tried. We've tried our own path. We've, we've done the best that we know how to do. Yet we do come up short, don't we? We're not able to bridge that gap and experience the, the kind of love relationship with God that we yearn for, that we know we were created for, that we celebrate at Christmas time. Ah, God does have a Christian solution to our dilemma. That solution simply isn't about what we do, but it's about what God has done for us. You see, God knew that we yearn to be in relationship with Him and that our human efforts to be in relationship with Him were always thwarted. They always fell short of God's glorious ideal. And so He decided to come personally. He's the one that decided to bridge the gap to us from his side. Listen to what Paul says in Ephesians about this truth. 
God saved you by His grace, and grace is one size fits all. He saved you by grace when you believed. You cannot take credit for this. It is a gift from God. It's a gift. It's a Christmas gift. And although the the grace of God one size fits all, I don't want you to miss this morning the reality that God's gift for you is a personal gift. Yes, so to speak, under God's tree, he's, he's got a gift, this baby in a manger, and that gift has your personal name on it. It's not a, a generic to all of humanity. No, it's to you personally. Because God knows that you personally yearn to be in relationship with him that you desire to know his unconditional love instead of his conditional love. And we think like human love, God's very conditional. And so because we're, we're not the children that we ought to be, we're, we're not the holy people, but yet sinners and inconsistent that somehow God is going to hold his love back from us. And he's going to punish us. He's going to give us what we deserve instead of what we need. One Christmas I thought I was going to get what I deserved instead of what I needed. I, I probably should have just got coal in my stocking. Maybe a tangerine, but that was it. My brother and I were playing football in the living room, which we were told not to do. And I ran back for a pass. My brother threw it to me. I caught it and scored a touchdown right into the family Christmas tree. All caught up in the lights and the tinsel and the, and the ornaments. I went to celebrate my touchdown dance and I pulled the entire tree over onto the floor. Lights were exploding, ornaments were bursting, tinsel was everywhere. Let me just tell you, my dad was not pleased. (laughs) And I was pretty convinced after that that They were going to unwrap all of my presents when I was asleep and take them back to the store. Because I didn't deserve to have those Christmas presents because I had had been disobedient. Nobody was more surprised on Christmas morning to find that, ah, I still had presents under the tree with my name on it. That even though I hadn't performed as I should have or could have, that my parents had not pulled away their love for me at Christmas time. And isn't it interesting how at Christmas time, over any other time of the year, we get beyond our conditional love for other people. In fact, we take the opportunity to maybe heal some broken relationships at Christmas time by buying something special, something very personal. And that's exactly what Jesus does for us. He he gives us a gift that's very personal. It is a, a gift of unconditional love. It is the gift that we need and yearn for, but not the gift that we deserve. He does it on our behalf. And so Christmas is really the message that God's gift for us is not something that we achieve. It is simply something that we receive by God's grace. And how do we receive this 
personal gift of grace, this gift of salvation that God has for us, I think three things. Number one is, is we've got to deal with our questions and our concerns. Now, I, I know on any given Sunday morning, there are folks here that are on approach. They haven't arrived yet. They're not yet in relationship with Jesus Christ. They haven't asked him to be the leader of their life. And usually that's because there's a question or a concern that, that they have. And, and I had those before I became a Christian. In fact, I had four questions. I wrote them down. And I went on a little quest for a few weeks to get my questions answered. And sure enough, in a, a couple of weeks, it was interesting how each of my questions got a, a response from God. In fact, you'll never believe this, but one of them was answered on a secular radio station. Christmas is the time to deal with your questions and your concerns. I'd encourage you to line them up and then go on a, a little expedition this Christmas season and just see if you can't get the, the answers to the questions that you have about God or about Jesus or about the Bible or how you ought to live your life or not live your life. Why let those questions or those concerns keep you from the the relationship with God that you know in your heart, in your soul, that you yearn for, that you're here for. We're a little bit like the Father in Mark. We have some belief, but like Him, we need to say, Lord, help me overcome my unbelief. You know that you're overcoming your unbelief because you're willing to take that step of faith. you got to decide. you got to respond to the invitation of Jesus Christ, the, the gift that he has for you. He does all the work. He knows, he knows you. And he's gone out, so to speak, and he's done the shopping probably on the internet these days. He's picked just the right gift, so to speak, for you. He's wrapped it. He's put it under his tree with your name on it. All we have to do is decide and go under the tree, pick out our gift, unwrap it, and take it out of the box. And I'd encourage you to do that just see what happens. Just see what happens. Because I know when we respond to Christ's invitation, our life changes because he came to change everything, even you and I. Here's how John uh, pens it in uh, Revelation 3.20. It's Jesus speaking, look, I stand at the door and I knock, and if you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in. God's done all the hard work by coming to our planet to enable us to do the easy work. All we got to do is open the door, invite him in, have him for supper, so to speak, and see if that isn't the best dinner you've ever had in your life. The third thing we need to do to really enjoy the grace of God, to, uh, to make good on our aspiration to be in relationship with God, is we need to develop. We need to do a, a little grow, a little growth. And look in your message outlines, I, I've just taken the word growth. And I want to talk about a couple of things. And let me help you here. I think this is the list that you need to be checking twice to truly enjoy the fullness of this Christmas season. How do we, we grow? First, we go to God in prayer. 
A few more prayers go up at Christmas time. Why? Because there's always a few challenges in the midst of the celebration, isn't there? And the great thing about God is, is that He's available and He wants to hear from us about whatever concerns us. And so we should go every day, not just Sunday morning, but we should go every day to God in prayer. And along with that, we should read the Word of God, the Bible, every day. Christmas is about a God that's not hiding. It's about a God who's revealed Himself. And He continues to reveal Himself in His Word. We have questions. We have guidance that we need, God describes not only himself, but how to live the Christian faith, our day-to-day lives right here. All we got to do is read it and apply it to our lives. We need to obey him moment by moment, and that's a little bit of a challenge, isn't it? I, I'm one of those, I, I do obey God momentarily. <laughs> I have my moments where I'm very good at obeying God, but I also have those moments where I don't obey Him. And when I obey Him, isn't it interesting that it seems to go very well? And then there are those moments of disobedience, and I've noticed those usually don't go too well, either for me or someone else. So obedience is a very good thing if we want to develop. Now, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Our relationship with God is not on the basis of what we do on our obedience. It's about what God has done for us. But obedience is a a factor in developing and growing our relationship with God. It positions us for all the good things that he has in store for us. We need to watch and resist temptation. And have you noticed Christmas is a a season of temptation? I, I am, everything from cookies, right? I'm blowing up like a house. I've been eating cookies. I... Any other time of the year, it's real easy for me to pass up cookies unless they're those really chewy, soft, double chocolate chip cookies with no nuts. (laughs) Those are a temptation. But at Christmas time, all the cookies, it's right? And if it's not that temptation, it's, well, this temptation right? Cookies to overspending to a little bit too much of the special eggnog. That's why we have these open front seats for you, by the way. All of those that had too much nog sit, need to sit up front, right? <laughs> there are temptations and it's amazing... <laughs> I was actually pointing here, (laughs) not over there. But if you want to run in front of that comment, I can't stop you. (laughs) There are plenty of temptations, and we have to watch and resist, don't we? Because those don't lead us in a, a good, healthy, positive, holy direction, do they? No, they don't. We need to... Trust God to give us the guidance that we need. And it, it's amazing how at Christmas time, life just doesn't stop. Now, I can guarantee you, not much is going to happen the week between Christmas and New Year's, but we're not there yet. That's tomorrow, isn't it? There's lots of decisions, lots of issues to deal with, and we need God's guidance. He wants to give us guidance. We just need to trust Him. And then finally, we need to hold on to God's Holy Spirit power in our life because it is the power for living and it's the reason 
for all the celebration that we have, isn't it? Because we're able to enjoy that, that power and that presence of God which points to His plan for us. Now that's a pretty good checklist for growth and development, isn't it? And I hope you'll not just check it today, but you'll check this list twice. Maybe the, this afternoon or sometime next week. When it comes to God's grace, one size does fit all. God's gift is for you. That Jesus Christ came to this planet as a baby in the manger to be the, the Christian solution to our very human dilemma. How are we to be in relationship with God? We're to be in relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Not through our own human effort, but through His gracious action on our part. One of the things that separates out Christianity from the other world religions is that Jesus Christ was the one and only Son of God. He was... An infinite God that choose to become finite and dwell amongst us. And then it's that very baby in a cave who will become a man and die on their cross for our sins and then resurrect once again to the heavenly realms. God desires for you to know his love. I'd encourage you to, to deal with your questions, to be decisive and decide to step forward in faith. I hope that this Christmas season will be a great season of spiritual and practical development and growth for you. That's God's gift to each one of us. Let us pray. Lord, I'm, I'm thankful that you give us what we need instead of what we deserve. That even though we are children of God and we don't act like it, that, that doesn't stop you from loving us. That didn't stop you from coming. And Lord, for those today that, that have questions, I, I pray, Lord, that, that they would begin to deal with those questions and concerns. Lord, for those that are, are needing a little push to decide today, I ask that you'd help them through your Holy Spirit to take that step of faith and ask you to be the leader of their life. And Lord, for all of us, we, we pray that we could develop and grow in our relationship with you this Christmas season, that, that Lord, once again, you would come to our hearts and our lives that we could enjoy you each and every moment of each and every day for all eternity. Lord, thank you for being the Christmas solution to our dilemma. Lord, help us to take that blessing and share that blessing with others this Christmas season. To your glory and to your honor we pray. Amen.